good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome. I'm only going to be up here for about one minute and I'm going to be handing over to our new president. So first of all I just want to start off by saying because I said last week I'd have a right of reply. Well, 42 Mondays, um, fifth, five fifth Mondays, uh, 10 board meetings, four cluster meetings and four uh, John Island Trust meetings. So it's quite a lot of work over a year. Um, but I've had fun and as I said at the Premier House, the more you put into anything in life, the more you get back from it. And this has certainly been true for the year I've had being your President. I also reminded you uh, at the Premier function that my vision had been that we would have one speaker, at least one speaker per month, and I'm reading from what I said out to you a year ago, one speaker per month from the forefront of research from one of our tertiary uh, institutions or CRIs. We should be challenged with world leading research that these institutions are doing in our region. And with our networks, this may hopefully spark associations leading to funding and or connections nationally and internationally for Wellington. Hasn't always worked out that way, but hopefully over uh, the year, you've seen an array of uh, stimulating speakers with at least some of those coming from our educational institutions and CRIs. The other thing that I'm really proud of is that we have um, embedded the Fifth Mondays. That uh, was an initiative from someone else, but I was happy to take it along and embed it. And the feedback we've had is everybody loves it. So um, that has been something I'm really proud of. And also uh, making sure that we've implemented the fellowship time so that the feedback again we got was that people wanted more time at Rotary to talk around their tables. And that was something, again, that came from one of the board members but is now well and truly embedded into the club processes. So finally, before I ask Mark to come up and take this unwieldy chain off my shoulders, <laughs> could I thank in particular Rebecca, I couldn't have done it without Rebecca and my PA Mary. Um, Lee, the past president, was always a point of reference and always was there to give me advice and support, as did James, my vice president. So uh, James, immensely wise, been here a long time, it was great, thank you. Um, could I thank my board? Uh, for all of their support and work over the year. And um, finally, the people um, that we uh, gave Paul Harris fellows to, and that was Patrick, <laughs> raising his eyebrows, and John, because we all turn up and this stuff works every time, and it's a disaster if it doesn't, so thank you. So now I'm going to invite Mark up and wish him um, all the best. So good luck, go well and enjoy. And I'm going to give him a number of things. First of all, uh, Yui gave me this book because I do what happened this day in history and I'm going to gift it to you if you're going to carry on that tradition so you can get some of it from there. I also got given from Lee this little pin to pass on. It's got a, probably a zircon, but we'll call it a diamond in the middle of it. So you can pin that on your chest. And I'm going to give you this. And I've already given them my folder, but I don't need to have that over up here. Good luck. Congratulations. Thanks, uh, Kiri. Uh, Kia ora koutou. Uh, welcome to the start of the 96th year for the Rotary Club of Wellington. Uh, I just want to reflect back on the 95th year, and even though we did it uh, uh, last week, Kerry did provide outstanding inspirational leadership, has left off better off as a club, and Kerry epitomises what we all stand for, service before self. And on behalf of all of you, Kerry, thank you for an outstanding year. Uh, I'd like to invite Denzel to say grace. God, in whom we live and move and have our being. On this, at this changeover lunch, 
We thank you for the fine leadership that has been given to us in the past year by Kerry. And we commend Mark and Katie to you in the coming year. Help us all to a constructive attitude to living and to planning. And may we always be ready to put service before self. Amen. Thanks, Denzel. Uh, just a prompt, two things. Uh, mobile phones, just uh, in the modern era, please make sure they're on silent or vibrate, whatever turns you on. Uh, and um, make sure you're wearing your badges, uh, please, because it's how we keep track of who's at, uh, at lunch. Uh, for our speaker today, I'd like to welcome John Johansson, uh, and uh, Mark uh, will introduce and thank him uh, later on. Uh, one guest I understand uh, today, we've got... Uh, Kevin Bayliss, who's not really uh, a guest, uh, sponsored by Roger Miller, has been through the board approval process, not yet inducted. So, um, Kevin, I'll ask you to stand up with Roger, please. So. Same Kevin that's came last week. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, Kevin, uh, welcome, and I think you're the only guest we've got, so welcome in. Uh, three birthdays, and we do birthdays in arrears, as you all appreciate. Uh, Jenny Button uh, yesterday, uh, Jeff Shaw yesterday, and John Rowe today. So please uh, contribute in towards the Sunshine Box. Um, the sergeant today is uh, Dennis Kakuri, so Dennis, uh, welcome. Present Mark, members, and Kevin. Um, today is significant for a number of reasons. President Kerry becomes immediate past president. Um, we welcome in the new president, Mark, and this day in history, 240 years ago, 13 American colonies stood behind the Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. The irony of this is not lost on us as we have recently witnessed Brexit more on Independent Day later um, by our guest speaker as well. Um, Mark Wheeler, our new president, has enjoyed a distinguished career in the New Zealand Army, eventually retiring as a colonel and head of personnel at the New Zealand Defence Forces. Therefore, anyone who has had involvement with the um, armed forces um, should pay in recognition of this. I think a colonel is, is very oh, sufficient. Brigadier. Oh, Brigadier, I do apologise. <laughs> and, 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 and President Mark, I will make a very generous contribution. <laughs> yeah, that I do, yeah. Um, now, Mark, as you all know, has embarked on a new career after the um, armed forces in aviation security. And again, in recognition of Mark's contribution to our travelling welfare, I um, invite all those people to make a donation, um, perhaps rather than those who have recently flown into Brussels or Istanbul. Um, now, Kerry, um, you are going to be mentioned as well after nine years as a very effective mayor. Um, you continue to make a significant contribution um, in a whole diversification of activities, and these include the um, among other things, Ambassador of the Alzheimer's um, New Zealand, Executive Chair of the New Zealand International Festival of Arts, Chair of the Environmental Protection Authority and the New Zealand Tourist Board and now Chair of um, New Zealand Film Commission. And as they say, you know, if you give um, someone who's busy, um, it is likely to be done. Anyway, um, if anyone uh, has ever forgotten their partner's birthday, did not present themselves at the Edinburgh Tattoo, use, uses fossil fuels, failed to give away, uh, give way to a camper van or did not see the Hobbit, please pay. <laughs> I think that captured all your activities in it. Uh, now, back to the 4th um, of July Independence Day, um, what was apparent 
that those involved in the Declaration of Independence had a very clear vision for a separate country free from the shackles and demands of Great Britain. And they were also sick of the British Crown telling them what they could do and what they couldn't do, and it certainly sounds familiar. Is this Scotland you're talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about the world at the moment, actually. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, with the exception of Mark uh, Woodard and our speaker John, who are both, I think, are experts on US history, I'm just going to ask a few questions, uh, sorry, a few uh, questions to demonstrate to our speaker today that you're a very intelligent group of people. Um, now, um, who, who wrote the initial draft of the Declaration of Independence? Come on, come on. No, you're right. Thomas and Jefferson, you're absolutely right. Can anyone name two of the signatories to the Declaration who later went on to become presidents of the United States? Uh, oh, I can. I will ask Mark now. Mark, you'll know this. Washington and Adams. Adams, no, and Jefferson. And what was the other event that they had in common? Uh, Adams and who? Uh, Jefferson and Adams. Jefferson. They died on the same day. Well, they did, was, and, and what? July 4, 1726. Exactly, 50 years after the date of independence. And, what the, and Jefferson said, thank God, at least the other one's still alive. <laughs> that is right, and yet he had just died, what, three hours earlier. <laughs> they, didn't have, they didn't have internet then. <laughs> Anyway, um, how many people, this is another interesting uh, fact, how many people lived in the 13 colonies when declaration was signed? 2.5 million, not a lot. Um, and again, which country gained independence from the United States on the 4th of July? 1946, another. Um, Philippines, yep. Now, finally, um, I had to put this one in. Um, as we have evidenced the global dissatisfaction with the main line party politics and the uncertainty it brings, we in New Zealand continue to enjoy um, the relative benefits that a stable government brings, evidenced by the fact that we have had two prime ministers in the last 17 years. Now let's show our gratitude and empty our pockets and acknowledge how very lucky we all are. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Uh, world travellers departing and returning? Departing and returning, welcome. Um, uh, we've now got a couple of five minute uh, talks. The first one, Laurie Wilson. Uh, Laurie is a new member, but has also agreed to be the chair of the International Committee. Uh, it's a very experienced committee. Uh, and well backed up, uh, uh, so Laurie will be well backed up, so we should get to know Laurie, so welcome. Thank you President Mark and honorary members. Um, five minutes, it's not a lot of time to tell you about my extensive life, but I thought what I'd do today is share a few of my adventures over the years, and they're adventures that have shaped the person that I am today, and will give you some insights into why I'm looking forward to being part of the Rosary family. But I thought I'd start off with a metaphor for my life. Indiana Jones. I used to work in Korea, and there was a young Korean guy, and he walked in my office one day and he said, Laurie, you remind me of Indiana Jones in a suit. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're not afraid to roll up your sleeves and help us get the work done. And when you do that, you brush up and you go and represent us to the boss. So Indiana Jones has become a bit of a metaphor for my life because, like Indiana Jones, he's an adventurer. He's competitive, he loves a challenge, loves a laugh, and can brush off and get on with the next thing. My adventures in life started at a very early age. My parents were in the theatre, and in fact they were in the um, early days of downstage. They came to New Zealand, 65 to 67. 
Because they were theatrical, they thought I could be as well. So, they put me in for auditions to be the Milky Bar Kid in London. Now, you don't have to be a rocket science to realise how could Laurie, dark hair, be a Milky Bar Kid. But I used to put my hands up, the Milky Bars are on me, and I actually became a finalist in the Milky Bar thing. But there was a wise producer and said, dark hair doesn't really fit with the white image of the Milky Bar. But it didn't stop me. I went on and I did 21 television commercials, till I got to about 12 or 13, when I started getting spotty and no longer looked beautiful on TV. <coughs> So, when I got to leaving school, it was, what am I going to do? And I said, well, if I can be on one side of the camera, why don't I go on the other side? And I joined the heady world of the advertising industry. And I went in as a young 17-year-old, right? I couldn't be bothered finishing school. My school report always said Laurie could try harder. So I started at the bottom as a messenger boy with letterpress plates, as they were in those days, humping them to and from... Fleet Street on the tubes. And I worked my way up over the years and I became a madman. So those people that have watched the TV series Mad Men, it's about the New York advertising scene in the 60s and 70s. Now I'm a little bit later than that, but I worked in the ad industry for 30 odd years. And it was about money, it was about power, it was about success. And I was on that bandwagon, and I really enjoyed it. And I worked for some fantastic multinational ad agencies all around the world, including Saatchi and Saatchi, who sent me off to Asia. And it's when I got to Asia that I started to have this sort of clash of what I was. Because there I was, having earned tons of money, flash, aggressive ad industry. But they sent me to Asia. And I was in Seoul, South Korea, for three years, and then they sent me to Thailand. And my experience in Asia changed me forever, because I went from, there's more to life than just being competitive, aggressive, earning tons of money. And that whilst that's good and important, there's another side to you. And it's when I was in Asia doing advertising work I would sleep on floors in the Philippines. I would go out with young children to find out how they ate. And I learned a lot about humanity and that, you know, there's another side to the world. I visited slums in the Philippines, right? 2% of the wealth in the Philippines. So 85% of the wealth was held by something like 2% of the population. The rest of them were destitute. I went to Cambodia, spoke to kids that had no parents, no grandparents because of Pol Pot, Pol Pot, but they could speak five languages. They were so resilient. And I thought, if these kids could just get a little bit more help, how much more resilient could they be? So I learned a lot about we have the power to just do a little tiny thing to make a diff big difference to people. And I'm sort of moving off the shackles of my ad career. Um, so Asia taught me a lot, and that's why I'm here at Rotary. And um, I'm here to help people using the experience that I've got. These days, I help SMEs in New Zealand and the Pacific. I work with youth. I help the unemployed start businesses. So I'm a little bit like um, the guy that helps small business guy. And 93% of New Zealand's economy is based on the productivity of 93% of businesses. Do a lot of work with youth. Take unemployed youth in South Auckland and teach them that they can get out of where they are. Um, so that's, that's where I am today. Um, I love working hard. I love working with people. I still put on the boots at the weekend and go around and play football. 59-year-old running around, but I enjoy it. Getting dirty, it's that challenger, Indiana Jones spirit in me. Um, I was quite good at sport, but never quite made it, but I have one claim to fame, Shane Warne. He and I share something in common. What is it? I beat him to a milestone before he got there. I bowled out Mike Gatting when he was 15, 
People were saying he'll be a captain of England. I got there first, I bowled him out. And one day I'm going to tell Shane I got there first. Um, so enjoy sport, enjoy mucking in the community. That's why I'm here in Rotary. That's why I've agreed to chair the International Committee and I'll also be helping the youth through Eureka. Thank you very much. Thanks, Laurie. Um, Yuri just pointed out we've just had a 4.6 earthquake uh, at 1245. Uh, so there, if, uh, don't panic if there is more around it, uh, but we should always be prepared in Wellington, as you know, to be able to evacuate should a bigger one occur. So uh, be conscious. Uh, Um, could I have uh, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes uh, before we break for fellowship because uh, I uh, agree with Kerry, fellowship time is important. Uh, just a really quick one. Uh, the Rotary Club of Wellington approach, you'll see, I'll jump over the, the, the banner that's on the front here and the top pin that I'm wearing is the Rotary uh, theme for 2016-17 which is uh, by President John F. Germ, serving humanity is the most worthwhile thing a, uh, most worthwhile thing a person can do. Uh, and the second pin I'm wearing, which is the, the Rotary Foundation 100th Centennial Pin, uh, or the, the Centennial Pin, uh, and part of their thing is hopefully this year we'll see the end of polio, uh, and then the next theme is likely uh, is to be water, is my understanding, is where it's likely to head to, which is why the International Committee is very well positioned. Uh, for me, um, three quick slides in a nutshell, and I'll expand on these over the next few weeks. Uh, maintaining Kerry's fifth Mondays and continuing fellowship time because they're very important. Um, and Kerry um, was very ruthless and very important at limiting the number of multi-year commitments focused on fewer, fewer and better resourcing key projects. Uh, so we've, we've adopted that uh, part. In club administration, we're further developing the website, uh, small team led by Michaela. Uh, reviewing the club location and costs, and there's a survey monkey that's gone out for that. Really, it's just finding out what members think before we sort of look at the options for all of those things. Um, ongoing major community events remain Eureka and Forum, and uh, the Centennial activities, there's a number of them, and there'll be a, uh, some more five minutes on it, but Forest at the Heart of Wellington is uh, a key obvious one. Uh, externally facing committees, my view is we're five clubs in one. Uh, the four external facing committees, community services, uh, are looking at employing people with disabilities and helping homeless. The international committee's major projects you can see up there, uh, sky hydrants, emergency response kits, and then a ROMAC uh, sometime in the year. Vocational, skilled migrants, uh, Akina, mentoring for Akina, and vocational visits in the youth. Uh, this month we launched SCOPE, which is the young executives, uh, Kaka project outward bound in Ryla. Uh, internal committees and the membership still looking at 221 by 2021, this year roughly going from 142 to around about 160, um, and maintaining current membership. Fellowship, and there's a whole list of them, Third Thursday, Thursday, billiards, wine evening, guess who's coming to dinner, you can read them up there, the cinema, dance, art, uh, walks, major fundraising, jumbo tennis, and singers to listen for contribute the majority of our funds. Major fundraising recipients proposed to be signed off. Gillies McIndoe, Surgical Research Trust and uh, Kerry Takanoa Foundation as part of the singers to listen for. Volunteer activities, blood pressure, pack the bus, ongoing tree planting, maintenance and vermin control. Uh, and we'll now stop. That's an overview, but you'll get more of those. Um, but you can see as a club, it's huge, it's big. In my view, it is uh, five clubs in one compared to a normal Rotary Club. Uh, take... Uh, Eight minutes and back for a one o'clock start with John, please. <laughs>